most people almost believe everything they, they see on the Internet, and that influences their thinking. Uh, in fact, I saw one poster that was up that said, start telling people that the mind is an app, and they'll start using it. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky. I am on the line today with entrepreneur Dave Roman. How are you, Dave? I'm fine today. Fantastic. Now, Dave, for everybody who's on the call, uh, he's going to be sharing some very important things about mindset and actual fact, 10 mental blocks to starting your own home business. Now, this is a very popular field, isn't it, Dave? Oh, yes, definitely. What does this actually mean uh, to entrepreneurs who are just about to start up and and they've got this great idea to start a business, but then they get these roadblocks? And how can we help them? Basically, it's people having a strong belief in something that limits the way in which we perceive and process information from the outside world. We may filter out information that contradicts our belief and end up in our own reality tunnel. Mm -hmm. So this is what gives us mental blocks. How do we know when we have a mental block? What's the sort of experience that we we would have? Frustration, Mm -hmm. um, because number one, most of the people who used to come into my live workshops locally, uh, they wanted to start a home business, but they really had no idea what, what to start. And uh, that's one way they had a mental block. And the next way is perhaps when they start thinking of ways to start a business, in their minds they're saying, well, I can't really do this. I don't know how to do this. Uh, So those are, and and there are 10 of those mental blocks. Actually, there are more, but there are 10 major ones. Is this more a a function of um, knowledge uh, of a process than it is a mindset thing? Or is there a balance between knowing how to do something and thinking that you can do it? Yes. You, some people have a good mindset. They like business. They're very talented, but they don't know how to take their talents and turn it into a money-making business. And uh, like you say, for example, one of the first ones people come up with is, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'll fail if I start a business. Well, everybody has that same thing in their mind. And look at Thomas Edison. It mm-hmm. took him a, a thousand times before he invented the light bulb, and yes. he never gave up. And you have, the whole problem right there is that you learn from failure. If you don't fail, you're not learning. Now, sometimes you can look at various magazines like uh, Forbes or some of those success magazines, and you'll find that uh, probably an awful lot of entrepreneurs failed one or two times in business before they were successful. I know that you have um, a whole host of different examples, and I'd love to talk about um, each one of them, if we could, Dave. Now, in terms of number two, you, it talks about practicality. What what do you take from you know this idea of practicality as, as becoming an entrepreneur would be concerned? Most people will tell you that ideas are not practical. That's why when you brainstorm or sit down with people to talk about a potential business, uh, you have to get people who are positive-minded, but the idea is it doesn't have to be practical, but that idea may lead to something else that is practical. Do, does this does this lend itself to the idea that you need to hang around different circles of of people who are more positively uh, oriented? Uh, very definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, Brainstorming is probably something that you should do with maybe anywhere from three to five people who are positive-minded. And like you say, yes, uh, you can get into different uh, groups of people who think differently Mm -hmm. because you're going to learn from them. Another good one is that's not logical. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, you know, this, this idea of logic as it applies to being an entrepreneur. Well, it's not logical because when you come up with an idea, and again, as I said, some people don't think it's practical. Some people don't think it's, it's logical. Mm-hmm. And that example that I give there, years ago, my Aunt Bessie died and left me a restaurant. And I didn't know anything about restaurants, except that restaurants have tablecloths and tables and knives and forks and the cooks cook the food. 
And in the example, I say, well, what about Las Vegas? There used to be a restaurant there where there were no utensils to eat with. You ate with your fingers, your hands. And it was a medieval-type restaurant where 500 years ago or longer, people didn't have a lot of utensils. They actually put the food on the plate and ate with their fingers. Mm -hmm. So that's what the restaurant tried to do there. And if you ask somebody, there's a restaurant like that, they would say, well, how are you going to eat your food? There are no utensils. Well, that's not logical. So you have to go and explain to uh, to the person what you're talking about. So, so uh, if you choose not to be logical, you could come up with some magical ideas, I suspect. Oh, very definitely. Uh, I guess some people call that thinking outside the box, but mm -hmm. that's an old cliche. <laughs> another good one is, that's not my area. I'm not good at that. That's another one that's good. I can't think of his name right offhand, but the gentleman who invented Velcro was walking through a field. And if you know what burdock is, it's the plant with those little sticky uh, yes. uh, balls yep. on them. Mm -hmm. They stick to your clothes. Well, he was taking his dog for a walk, and these burdock were sti sticking to his pants and to his dog. And he came up with the idea, well, why, why can't I make shoes that close like that? So... He came up with the idea from a totally different area, nature. Nature gave him the idea of creating a product. Yeah, and, that's, and you see that all the time, don't you, Dave? You see that, you know, um, technology mimics nature. Oh, very definitely, because that's another thing I do. In addition to this, part-time mm -hmm. I teach computer technology at a local college, and I'm getting into all the latest high-tech stuff, and it's absolutely amazing. And yeah. there's products coming out like crazy that use stuff from nature to uh, figure out how to solve problems. I, I love to watch these documentaries because I often get these little little tweaks of ideas that I wouldn't have otherwise had if I hadn't looked back to nature. It's, now, in terms of having the right answer, what does that actually mean? That's a good one. That's one of my favorites because I use that with uh, some of my students I teach in my uh, computer class. And that is, yes, if you're sitting down brainstorming and everybody's coming up with ideas, there could be more than one right answer. For example, as you may have seen in my promo, that most of us were taught in school that a cube has six sides. And when you look at a cube, you can only see three at one time. Uh -huh. Or how about there are four sides, a top and a bottom? Or how about there are 12 sides, six outside, six inside? So all of those answers are correct. Very amazing. And another good example, too, is I, I put this one in the... the part of the uh, program, teacher is teaching a math to a seven-year-old. And the teacher says, if I give you one apple and one apple and one apple, how many apples will you have? And Arnie says, four. And the teacher says, I was expecting three. And then the student said, I have four, including the one in my lunch bag. So, yeah, there, there's always more than one right answer. That is fascinating. Now, um, I know that we can get very serious about our entrepreneurial journeys, and the next one on the list really stuck out for me in that uh, play is frivolous. Is this meaning that it's okay to not be so serious sometimes? Oh, sure. Play is frivolous, meaning take a break. And I, I know so many people who come up with ideas by just exercising and it doesn't you don't have to do it with weights you can walk around the block or walk for miles and it frees up your mind for thinking of other things so play is not really a waste of time it helps you create better ideas because your blood's flowing and it's not only uh, helping your mind out but you're physically getting fit <laughs> And, and on that, Dave, I always like to learn a little bit about um, my guests. How, how does your day look? Well, my routine, and I've been doing this almost most of my life, I get up and I work out at a gym. Mm -hmm. And I'll do the uh, power walking, and I'll do some light weights and some machines. But I feel great after I get through working out early in the morning. That's the first thing I do. And I also eat eat very healthy. I eat mostly organic foods. Yep. Uh, and, and then I'll sit down and, and prepare for a class. Uh, but I don't sit there for hours at a time. I have to get up and walk around at least every hour yep. uh, because you can get stale and it's not healthy for you to sit that long. But that's normally, that's normally my day. Do you have a particular time in your day that you find that you get up? I usually I get up about seven o'clock or seven thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I, I go through my routine. And I, I'm also one of those health nuts who eats totally uh, healthy, or, organic mm-hmm. foods. Uh, I don't drink any soda pop or anything like that. And I find that after many, many years of that, it's a lot easier to stay healthy. Yes. In fact, I have not gone to a regular doctor probably in 30 years. Oh, wow. uh, anything I, I cure or take care of is with herbal cures. So do you, I'd be interested to get your input on um, uh, sugars. What, what's your view of um, sugar in, in people's diets? Sugar is poison. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. Yep. yep. It's not good for the body. Today, everybody is more health conscious, and even the food makers. I mean, there are stores, at least where I live, there are three or four stores that sell nothing but organic food. And if you go to a regular supermarket and look at the, read the labels before you buy it. Mm-hmm. And if you can't pronounce the chemicals in it, don't buy it. And they all have sugar. The next one sort of reflects me uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Play is frivolous. You are relaxed. Tell us a little bit about that. That goes all the way back to medieval times when the, the king, nobody wanted to say no to the king. Uh, there was one person that always said no. That was the court jester. The <laughs> king always had a court jester to give him a different point of view because everybody else were, they were yes men. So some ideas can be foolish at first, but yeah, keep them on the table because they may be useful at a future time, no matter how silly they are. For example, let me give you a good example. Somebody came up with the idea of, uh, boy, I want to start a real estate company on the moon and sell property on the moon. And everybody would look at him and say, you are crazy. But look <laughs> at technology. Yep. In 20 years, maybe that's going to be true. Yep. The next one on this list is this idea of don't be foolish. This this sort of kind of links in with the previous one, it, um, play is frivolous. Uh, is there any difference between the two? Nah, not really. But, uh, you know, play is frivolous is one thing. You think of playing games, exercising, and things like that. Don't be foolish is a little bit uh, related, but just think about it. Uh, sometimes people are talking and they make funny comments just without thinking about them. They're being foolish sometimes. And sometimes you can come up with a great idea just by being foolish. Yeah, you... Just by using using a product in a different way that you'd never think using it for. I'm, I'm interested in your creative process, Dave. When you're starting a, a home business or you're looking to start or add something new to your business, do you use these 10 essentials as you go through your creative process? Yeah, get your people together, as I said, your two, three, four people to brainstorm and set a time. Mm -hmm. Let's say you set a half hour and you have a problem on the table. The problem is I want to start a new business and I'm an accountant, but I don't know how to start a business as an accountant or these are my hobbies. So you have a limited time and you write down every idea, no matter how crazy or how foolish it sounds. Then after the half hour, you take a break. You can take either five minutes, five hours, or maybe even five days and come back and reevaluate the ideas. And you can even come back with five different people and reevaluate the ideas. But that stimulates the, uh, the juices flowing when you do that. You have to let your brain simmer on it. You can't expect to come up with a solution to a problem right away. Yeah, do you um, do you find that in these groups that you're taking notes? Um, you know, is there power in the pen? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Write it down. Uh, we're human beings, and many times some of us don't have good memories. Uh, <laughs> so you gotta you gotta write it down, and uh, so that you can bring it up in the next meeting. From that point in time, once you've got a collection of of different ideas written down, are they grouped? How do you take an idea and turn it into something real? Well, as I say, when you come back in five minutes, five hours, five days, then you have to start evaluating, is it really practical at this time? What is the competition? Who else is doing this? So there are are probably a different set of things that you're evaluating at the time. And eventually you're going to throw out a lot of the ideas and say, okay, put them on the side for next year or next month. These three ideas that we just came up with, those seem to be the most practical. Let's go into de- detail on those. I guess if there's a downfall of creative thinking, that's it. That you, some people come up with too many ideas and it's like herding cats. Then, <laughs> then you can't do very much. Yeah, and this, uh, this idea, um, the next point I'd love to talk about is this um, 
is avoiding ambiguity and dancing. The high school dance is what I'm talking about. Uh, I remember this many years. I've always been like this. When I went to the high school prom, I went to pick up my date, and her father came to the door and he looked at me and he and he said, "Are you the young man that's taking my daughter to the date, to the the dance?" And I said, "Oh yes." He said, "I want her home by 10. <laughs> and of course, I asked him, "What do you mean by 10? 10 days? 10 weeks? What?" <laughs> And he didn't like that at all. I can imagine. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't take my kidding. I was just kidding, obviously. But... <laughs> and I, I think uh, this dovetails quite nicely too, Dave, into this idea of following rules. I've never been one to follow rules. What's What's the importance of um, you know? Do, do you place any importance of having rules and and even breaking them? Well, yes. Any civil society has to have rules and laws, just like I, I said, stop signs, red lights, no parking. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I can't think of the book I read, but the book uh, focused on the fact that something like some ridiculous number, like 70% of all inventions were invented by people who broke the rules. Yes. Uh, they went outside the box. They they invented something that people said it can't be done, and they did it. So following the rules is great. You have to follow the rules, but when you're in brainstorming, there are no rules. One of the things that a lot of people, I suspect, Dave, would get stuck on is that they don't believe in themselves. How important is it to believe in yourself in terms of, hey, I'm not creative? That's just it, people. It's, it's, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can believe that you can't do something and you won't be able to do it. And in fact, I have a little saying that I give to the students in class that uh, get off your backs and quit telling yourself the baloney story that you can't do this mm -hmm. and you're making excuses to, as to why you can't do it. And uh, yeah, some people aren't creative, but if they're stimulated enough, if they're pushed enough, they can be really creative. They ha you have to get their mind outside the box their thinking is caged in. And I think uh, what you're talking about here is that story about the, uh, the toilet paper story. Johnny Carson, many, many years ago, uh, was telling a joke about uh, the shortage of toilet paper in New York City, and he's on late at night. Some people tuned in later, and they didn't hear the joke. All they heard was that there's going to be a toilet uh, paper shortage in New York City. <laughs> and the next day, Consumers cleaned out all the toilet paper from most of the stores in New York City because they thought there was going to be a shortage. <laughs> it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> it pays to get the full picture, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you can almost see the yes. impact of influence there as well, can't you? Oh, yeah, very definitely. It's just like the, uh, the Internet and uh, Facebook and Twitter and all those uh, social media things. Most people almost believe everything they, they see on the Internet, and that influences their thinking. Uh, in fact, I saw one, uh, Morgan Freeman, you know, the movie star Morgan yes. Freeman? Yeah, I saw him, a poster that was up that said, start telling people that the mind is an app, and they'll start using it. I, I'd like to, if I could, Dave, expand on this idea of uh, creativity and how we go about this. Now, you have... Um, seven unusual creative techniques that you've given the acronym SCAMPA. What's that all about? I'd love to learn more about it. Uh, okay, SCAMPA is a technique that was invented by uh, uh, Roger Van Oak, Ork. Uh, he had a book out and he has a, a couple of uh, tapes out. And that's where I got this idea from, the SCAMPA idea, many years ago. And I, I played on it. I created my own techniques. And it is absolutely amazing. And the, the seven techniques, the scamper, are substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, and reverse. And I can go over each one of those mm -hmm. and, and tell you what they are. The first one, substitute. You can have a product that a company puts out, it makes, and many times I look at products and say, well, I can make it better, I can make it cheaper, I can make it smaller and substitute. For instance, does everybody know what M&Ms are, right? Yep. Candies. 
Okay. Only too well, might chocolate. I say, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're filled with chocolate. Yep. And what if somebody substituted vitamins inside of the M&Ms and made them healthy M&Ms? <laughs> you substituted the sugar for vitamins. So that's the substitution part. Can you substitute something in a product? Mm -hmm. And one of the favorite things to do, I, I always tell people at the end of a workshop, is how can I find products like that? Very easy. Do what you do naturally. Go shopping. Yeah. Go to a Walmart or a drug mart or whatever. Start looking at all the products that they have there that they're selling for a dollar, five dollars, whatever they're selling for, uh, for. And can you make them better? Can you make them bigger, faster, or whatever? Substitute for something. That's so that's basically what the substitute uh, technique is. It's almost that innovative uh, thing that we were talking about earlier. Right. You know, can you substitute a better material? Can you substitute plastic for metal and so on? Now, on to the next one, which is combine. Uh, combine is combining products or techniques. I have one up there, and this is a local uh, young man, again, many years ago. He was a, in high school, he played drums in a band. And what he did was he took garbage cans, metal garbage cans, you know, nowadays they're all plastic, but there used to be like metal garbage cans. Mm -hmm. And he put his drum top on top of a garbage can, and he got a completely different sound, a unique sound. And everybody asked him whenever he played in the band in school, what, how did you do that? And eventually, when he graduated from school, he started a business making and selling those drums for people. He combined a garbage can with a drum top. Is this is, is this a good lead in to the next one, which was adapting or adding something? Adapting, yeah, it it, it could be. Uh, I, I forgot a good one here. You probably saw it. The combine the gym. I created that 25 years ago, and I couldn't get anybody to finance it, of course. <laughs> and and today everybody's health conscious, and I've never seen anything like this in 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 the country. In fact, I'm. In the process of writing up proposals to a couple of uh, companies that build gyms. But what I've di done was combine everything into one health fitness center. Inside the center is the gymnasium where they, people can go in and work out on equipment. The second floor is a track where they can walk around. Along the outside are alternative doctors' offices, chiropractors, naturopaths. And in front of the store, on one side there's a health food store, and on the other side there's a sporting goods store. In the back of it, there is a health food restaurant. And outside of the health food restaurant is a soccer field where local schools can come and either practice or play their soccer game, all in one facility. Yeah, well, that's right, because one would feed to the next one and to the next one and so forth. And then in the next one, you're talking about modify building bricks, Mazasi in Uganda. I'd love to learn a bit more about that. Everybody knows what Legos are, right? Yes. Well, and if you've ever laid bricks before, you know that you take the uh, the mortar and you, and you build your wall and put the next brick on top of the mortar and so on, and, and you try and make it straight. Well, this guy had the idea of taking the bricks, the bottom of the bricks, and making sort of protrusions or notches in it, like Legos, so that you don't have to worry about it being straight. You just put your mortar on, force it in, and you've got it straight because it fits right into the notch. Oh, wow. That's, that's, uh... And uh, over in Uganda, this guy, is, it's a full-time business now. Now, we've got three left. We've got the P, the E, and the R. The first one is to put to another use, and you've talked about M&Ms. There are things out there that if you're using it for one thing, you can put it to another use. Uh, for example, rubber tires. Uh, rubber tires are usually stacked, thrown away and stacked up into the ground or whatever. Uh, they Previously, they really had nothing to do with making new product. But now manufacturers take the rubber tires and grind them up into a powder uh, and then put them in cement because they have some highways in Europe that are made out of that, and they last much longer than the uh, cement in the United States because it gives a little. It's oh. the rubber in, intermixed into the cement. So, uh, so it, it, it's amazing. And the problem, the only reason it, doesn't, uh, it isn't here yet is because, uh, 
I hate to say this, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's the unions. Mm -hmm. They won't allow that because they can't get that much work done. Because if they last longer, they're going to be out of work. Now, on to eliminate. Garden tools, one handle for all. Yeah, that was another one. Uh, (laughs) Again, if you're an expert gardener, you probably want the the top-of-the-line garden tools. You you don't care about what you pay for them because you want the best. But sometimes they can be pretty expensive. So why not have a line of tools where you have one handle with a little thread on the bottom and you have all the regular garden tools that you can put on anytime you need them. You know, screw on the shovel or screw on, screw on the rake and so on and sell it all as a kit. Now the next one I know that you are deeply involved with and I bet you use it quite often is reverse. And you talked about computer programs. How does it apply to computer programs? Yeah, reverse engineering. Basically, I, I was a computer programmer for probably 15 years. And I know I had a, one time I had a job to do in Chicago where I went to the company home office and they had a competitor's program. And what I had to do is re- reverse engineer it. In other words, decompile it and find out how they wrote the program so that this company could make it better or cheaper or faster. And it, it, uh, they reverse engineer it because it's a lot easier than trying to reinvent the program in your mind. Because all you do is re- re-engineer it, you've got the program, and you have some clever programmer just tweak it, make it better. Well, you know, thinking of clever and uh, new ways to think about old ideas and innovation and all of the wonderful things we've touched on today, Dave. Now, when people want to learn more about you and get more content from you, where are they going to go? The easiest place to go is to www romanreports.com that's a promo page I have for my workshops and they can go there and find out more about it and then uh, click on a link it'll take them there to actually try the first or second lesson for free fantastic and when you hit that home page at romanreports.com which I will make the link available below this post you will see the power of positive tinkering and on that note Dave, thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business Show today. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.